Welcome back. In this lesson, we discuss general principles in managing hypertension in the elderly, leaving more detailed discussion on pharmacological and non-pharmacological therapy for later lessons. Importance of preventing and or mitigating end organ damage. The 2009 European Society of Hypertension slash European Society of Cardiology update on management of hypertension in the elderly consider subclinical organ damage to be very important component. This is because asymptomatic alterations of the cardiovascular system and the kidneys are important intermediate stages in the disease continuum that links risk factors such as hypertension to cardiovascular events and death. Moreover, multiple organ damage assessment is useful because of the evidence that in the presence of at least two signs of organ damage, even when present in the same organ, cardiovascular risk may be increased, putting the patient into the high cardiovascular risk category. Reassessment of subclinical organ damage during treatment is also crucial because it offers information on whether the selected treatment is protecting patients from progressive organ damage and potentially from cardiovascular events. Analysis of the data provided by some prospective studies indicate that in hypertensive patients, echocardiographic left ventricular hypertrophy is associated with an incidence of cardiovascular events equal to or above 20% in 10 years. Furthermore, the relationship of carotid intima media thickness, or IMT, and plaques with cardiovascular events, already discussed in the 2009 update, has been further reinforced by the European Lacedipine Study on Atherosclerosis Trial. This study has shown that Intima media thickness value at the bifurcations and the common carotid arteries exerts an adverse prognostic effect in addition to that of high blood pressure. Finally, renal subclinical organ damage is associated with a 10 year risk of cardiovascular events of 20%. In a prospective cohort, of Greek hypertensive patients, a low estimated glomerular filtration rate was associated with a 20% incidence of cardiovascular events in 10 years. Now, guidelines on lowering blood pressure in the elderly is complicated. Despite having the highest prevalence of hypertension and greatest risk for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, Older adults are frequently undertreated for elevated blood pressure. This group has been traditionally excluded or underrepresented in clinical trials due to concerns regarding frailty, fall risk, poor renal function, abnormal hemodynamic adaptation, and higher risk for autonomic dysfunction, cognitive impairment, and polypharmacy. With advancing age, the gap between chronological and biological age widens, and chronological age may be a poor surrogate for biological age. Furthermore, chronological age cutoffs used to identify older patients across guidelines are inconsistent, and blood pressure treatment targets remain controversial. Now let's look at Table 1 which is a comparison of blood pressure thresholds and targets between the three most important guidelines. First is by the American College of Cardiology slash American Heart Association 2017 guideline. Second is the American College of Physicians slash American Academy of Family Physicians 2017 guidelines. And lastly, the European Society of Cardiology slash European Society of Hypertension Guidelines. In January 2017, 
the American College of Physicians or ACP and the American Academy of Family Physicians or AAFP release guidelines for blood pressure management in adults greater than or equal to 60 years of age. Pharmacotherapy is recommended for persistent elevated systolic blood pressure of greater than or equal to 150 millimeters mercury to reduce the risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD. In November 2017, the American College of Cardiology or ACC slash American Heart Association or AHA Hypertension Guideline introduced a new definition for blood pressure management based primarily on results from the systolic blood pressure intervention trial, otherwise known as SPRINT, for most adults older than 65 years old, a more aggressive systolic blood pressure target of less than 130 mmHg is recommended. However, the ACC slash AHA guideline advises clinical judgment and patient preference to determine blood pressure targets in older patients with limited life expectancy and multiple comorbidities. It acknowledges the lack of randomized clinical trials for patients with history of frequent falls, advanced cognitive impairment, and those living in nursing homes or skilled nursing facilities. The 2018 European Society of Cardiology or ESC slash European Society of Hypertension or ESH blood pressure guideline categorizes older adults into two subgroups. First, the elderly refers to patients between the ages of 65 and 79 years old, while the very old refers to those older than 80 years old. The guideline recommends that pharmacologic treatment should be offered to all older patients with a systolic blood pressure of greater than or equal to 160 millimeters mercury. A lower therapeutic target of systolic blood pressure between 130 to 139 and diastolic blood pressure between 70 to 79 millimeters mercury can also be considered in the elderly patients or those older than 65 years old but not older than 80 years. Pharmacologic therapy may also be considered in fit individuals older than 80 years with an initial systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 160 millimeters mercury and or diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 90 millimeters mercury while targeting a blood pressure of 130 to 139 over 70 to 79 millimeters mercury. This decision should be based on clinical assessment of biological age and a thorough review of comorbidities. Treatment side effects must be closely monitored, particularly for those who are frail. Despite the findings from SPRINT and related meta-analysis, some concerns remain about the appropriateness and effectiveness of intensive blood pressure reduction in certain subgroups, including patients with chronic kidney disease, diabetes or stroke, and older adults over 65 years of age. However, a predefined sprint subgroup analysis in patients aged greater than 75 years reported that intensive blood pressure treatment significantly reduced the incidence of cardiovascular disease and mortality with no increase in serious adverse events compared with standard blood pressure lowering treatment. We'll talk about treating patients over 80 years old. Treatment of hypertension in the elderly patients older than 80 years of age was not evaluated specifically in prospective trials until the hypertension in the very elderly trial or HIBET study was published. The HIBET trial was a randomized prospective trial of 3,845 participants older than 80 years. The mean baseline blood pressure was 173 over 91 millimeters mercury, with 32% of the patients having isolated systolic hypertension. Patients were randomized to diuretic 
or placebo. An angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor was added if necessary to achieve a goal of blood pressure of 150 over 80 millimeters mercury. Active treatment was associated with a significant 30% relative risk reduction in fatal and non-fatal stroke and 39% reduction in stroke death alone. Cardiovascular disease deaths were reduced by 23%. All-cause mortality was also reduced by 23%. The HIVET trial answers a crucial question and gives an end to the dilemma whether hypertensive elderly patients should be treated or not. Physicians can feel comfortable prescribing antihypertensives for their elderly patients and know that there will be a mortality benefit. And lastly, we will discuss treating very high blood pressure in older patients. Another question regarding blood pressure treatment in older individuals is whether severe hypertension constitutes an emergency and whether, on the other hand, there are levels that could be too low that might be associated with increased risk known as the J-curve phenomenon. Hypertensive emergency is defined as severely elevated blood pressure in the setting of acute and organ damage. Examples of hypertensive emergencies are acute myocardial infarction, pulmonary edema, cerebral ischemia or hemorrhage, aortic dissection, encephalopathy, and progressive renal failure. Aside from the patient who has an obvious hypertensive emergency, how should patients who have asymptomatic severely elevated hypertension be treated? At what blood pressure level does it become admissible to transfer the patient to the hospital? There is no evidence to support the idea that acute reduction of blood pressure reduces cardiovascular events in the short or long term. In fact, many cases of harm have been documented. The mechanism by which acute reduction of blood pressure leads to harm is related to autoregulation of blood flow. Patients who have elevated blood pressure often have been present for many weeks or months. Any attempt to lower blood pressure acutely may harm them by offsetting the patient's adaptive autoregulatory control. Asymptomatic patients who do not have end organ damage or significant comorbid illness should not have acute reduction of blood pressure attempted. Instead, careful titration of antihypertensive medication should be undertaken with plans for close follow up. Excessive lowering of the blood pressure could be associated with poor outcome in the long term, also known as the J-curve phenomenon. A Framingham study in 2004 by Cannell et al. suggested that systolic blood pressure was responsible for the increased mortality and not diastolic blood pressure alone. That is all for now. We will discuss non-pharmacological and pharmacological therapy of hypertension in the elderly next.